Howdy, everybody. We're back. Yeehaw, howdy. The Ad Astra crew is playing another gay furry visual novel, which is just, can I say, an endless genre? Like, this one company makes a bunch of them, and this is from the same company that makes Ad Astra. In fact, uh, the the early parts, the, like the first half of it or so, was written by uh, the same writer that made that wrote Ad Astra, Howley. Uh, and then he handed it off to somebody else and, and went off to make Ad Astra, which surprisingly this the, like this started so long ago and Ad Astra didn't that I in my head Echo came first and like that makes me think it finished first Ad Astra actually finished development before Echo by like a, almost a year oh see like I wasn't so it, from what like, I heard I wasn't under that impression at all yeah like Echo took seven years to finish and so it actually wrapped up finally beyond, before that but it's also a little convoluted by comparison and one of those details is that there are we have like a, a route order to worry about, but also here we have a prequel spin-off demo thing. So what we're in here right now is not Echo, it's Route 65. Okay. So this is a separate thing we're gonna do first, which I've been advised that I can either I could do this first or I could do it at a specific point in a specific route. And there's mixed opinions about literally every choice I can make about I, how to, um, to approach this game. So no matter what I do, someone's going to think it's wrong. But I've like amalgamed like five people's opinions into this the, or, the order um, that I'm doing it in. I, I feel like uh, this sort of stuff. I'm well, I'm I'm glad that you have made a decision about the yeah. order in which to do these things because this sort of stuff stresses me out. It's almost like if you're playing a video game and there's a hallway before another hallway and you're like should i go down that yeah. hallway and go into these doors first or should i go to the objective first and come back to this hallway is going to ruin my experience if i do these things in the wrong order you know yeah but it's even more than that because it's, it's way like, more than that like a thousand hallways times. Is like oh did i get a molotov or not but in like in route order it can be like do i experience the story in a way that is like fulfilling and satisfying or even makes sense half the time because because like branching stories can be weird like that uh and a lot of people have been really uh, the handful of people that I've talked to have been really good about that about giving recommendations without giving any spoilers. So I still can't tell you what the plot of Echo oh, is. Oh gosh, <laughs> I still don't know well, what happens in Echo. I like that uh, I, I know. I'm the conduit by which yeah. all of the viewers who know nothing about this can experience this uh, vicariously. I'll be your vessel, and individuals come yeah. with me on this journey where i know nothing about anything and yeah Keith so we're both going in blind me. this time my primary exposure to echo is some fan art and just seeing the sprites for the main characters. i know literally nothing so, i don't even know what the main characters yeah, look like i know their names and what they look like but if you tested me on them i'd i'd fuck up at least half of that a little bit <laughs> i just hear that <laughs> this is names. this is very sad and dark and so so i think it is i, I think it is a horror right game and uh, I've just, this this is this going to be less like Ad Astra, where you could just go in and have a sad story and stuff, and more like content warning all, like the way Lisa was. Oh yeah, okay, perfect. So sign me up. I'm ready. That's to go. my warning to the audience, and I'll say it again at the beginning of the real Echo when we start the actual game or something. But uh, content warning, uh, all. <laughs> I don't I don't know exactly, but I, this game's. A lot, and ticks all of the boxes probably. I think so. If you are, a, a, if you are, if you are set off by media and, uh, and unpleasant well, stuff, I, I think most people here prob probably know probably here. know the trigger the trigger list of, of things. Yeah. So if any of the any, if any of the basic trigger list of things or really good guitar beats um, are off putting, then yeah, maybe it's just something to keep in mind. While Did you say forward. guitar beats? Yeah. <laughs> just. <laughs> I just like I, I'm not sure if I heard correctly. All right, let's go. I should have said rhythm, but you know, I fucked that one up. There was a very singular echo in this ravine. The rattling of wagons resembled carpenters hammering at board inside the highest rocks. The report of a rifle was. Keith, <laughs> are you fucking up? It's fine. It's fine. I can, I can <laughs> title. Demoted. I wasn't expecting a timed sequence in a visual novel. <laughs> there was a very singular echo in this ravine. The rattling of wagons resembled carpenters hammering at board inside the highest rocks. The report of a rifle resembled the sharp crack of thunder and echoes from rock to rock for some time. 
the lowing of cattle and braying of mules seemed to be answered beyond the mountains. Music most notably had a very queer effect and resembled a, a person standing inside the rock, imitating every note. William Clayton, Mormon trail pioneer. They have weird underwear. I mean, lots of Mom, people Mom, not now! Do I make a choice, or do I just do... You, there is no choice if your mom calls. You better fucking answer. <laughs> I think I might have just made a choice by not clicking anything. <laughs> I mean, if you choose not to decide, you still have made a choice. No. God, I can't deal with this right now. I stare at the screen, letting my phone vibrate until it stops. I'll try to make up an excuse that it was on silent later. That's the excuse I always make up before I decide not to answer a call. My phone is always on silent for my job, so I always have that excuse forever. Keith just likes to ignore me. I, I you don't call me on the phone. No, I ever don't. Because I, you're I hate younger than me, <laughs> and no one who is younger <laughs> than me has ever called me on the phone. <laughs> I had been, I had been a cringing, flustered mess since this morning. School and my geometry test had kept me only slightly distracted. With the call as a reminder, I feel a welling sensation around my eyes and my vision blurs. I suck in my cheeks before exuding a shaky exhale. Nothing will ever be the same anymore. My parents won't see me as normal anymore. All because I was daft enough to try to rub one out on the computer while the bus came this morning. Oh, that's so embarrassing. I, th I thought they were at work. Mom was <laughs> oh, usually God. out by five and dad by six, but they took the day off on account of their anniversary. Not only did they catch me pants down, prick in hand, but also found out I was gay in one fell swoop of headphone-induced lack of spatial awareness. I heard mom scream. I was so startled I jumped, my headphones coming unplugged from my laptop. Blasting fox slash stallion Ooh. porn on full blast. Is it the fucking barrel? Is it the stable? <laughs> does Keith does Keith know the porn that's being I referenced? I think I do. <laughs> no, this is like, no, this is a very frequently referenced thing. Oh, like this is this is like the furry equivalent of like step brother. I'm stuck in the dryer. <laughs> oh, I can't get out. <laughs> No, the, you know, this, <laughs> the fox on the stable is very well known. <laughs> Just when my dad came running in. I remember mom turned, went to her room, locked the door, and I didn't get her, and I didn't see her again before I left. Dad, meanwhile, was sort of laughing nervously before I took off to my bus stop, before I could tell, but I could tell from his face that this was beyond awkward for him. I yeah. Feel, I don't know. I feel like if this happened, if I had a kid and this happened, I'd be like... Okay. I think if you have a kid, it will happen. Oh gosh, I hate. I don't. Oh, I don't like thinking about that. <laughs> well, think, well, well, is it always fox stallion? No, movie? I don't mean the, de <laughs> the specific detail. I mean, like, if you have kids, I think you're going to at some point encounter their sexual discovery. Oh gosh. At some point, there's just a there's a there's a supreme lack of privacy of living with people, like just the constant effort it takes to hide everything all the time, forever, for years, like. That 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 fails. I mean, even that if you even if you point. are the com the most vanilla normal individual, you probably still jerk off, or the equivalent of that from time to time, and it's probably gonna be something your parents are aware of, which I hate. Yeah. I hate that you reminded me of that because yeah. now I'm thinking about my life and my family. So thank you. <laughs> the fact that kids, the the teenagers are never as subtle and and secretive as they think oh, they gosh. are. Teenagers are the equivalent of like whenever you think your dog, whenever your dog's lying to you and they think they're being smart, but you know exactly what's happening. That's all your, that's all of your teenage <laughs> years, I think. Oh no! <laughs> it's like your parents know like half the stuff. Oh no! They're gonna look at my. Uh, they're gonna know that I was reading Inuyasha fan fiction when I was in like the fucking like sixth grade. <laughs> Exactly, yeah. The first like, like that, Shishomaru! Like, <laughs> yeah. Inuyasha slash Shishomaru fan fiction. Yeah, that, that's, uh, Turning Red was about you, specifically. I, <laughs> they've got your diary. I related made, really hard to that. It. <laughs> it's a good movie. I couldn't bring myself to words. I just pulled up my shorts and ran to my bus stop. All throughout the day, the thought of coming home and having to face the shame was like being dunked in ice water. Each mile we travel closer to Echo increases that feeling of inevitable awfulness. 
I try to go over excuses in my head. I could maybe attempt to convince them that it was a, it was straight porn? I mean, at least you don't have to explain that it was furries, because... <laughs> I was going to say, in this universe, I think that one's probably okay. I must have an issue with, like, inner, inner species relationships, but I doubt that that's a thing. <laughs> Both of the guys in the video had pretty visible beard scruff. Okay, here's where we get to my... My endless question about beards on furries and what the, what those mean and how does that work? And I'm always so confused, but we just accept it in the designs. People just have beards sometimes, and, I, and it's not worth it. It's not worth interrogating. Yeah, it's not. It's not worth the the goofy Pluto interrogation of world building. It's fine. Just, goofy just deal Pluto. with it. That's not even that complicated. We <laughs> the chimps chimps still exist. <laughs> <laughs> in real life, I know, but they're both they're they're both the exact same species. Well, I mean, they're not. I don't think so. <laughs> they're both referred to as dogs in the universe. It's lupine. It's freaking Goofy's probably like lupine erectus or something. Like he's probably he's not the next step. He's probably not literally the, the same species as the dog. <laughs> Whatever. It's not worth thinking about. See, that's what this is the point. Yeah, but I just solved it or for you forever. No, I'm you not. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna keep bringing it up forever. I rub my eyes. The thought of trying to figure out what all my folks saw on the screen makes me want to, to retch. Did he even close it? <laughs> that's a good question. It wasn't specified. Well, I could say it was a virus that took control of my browser window. Yeah, that excuse always works. I mean, parents don't understand computers. And he was... <laughs> and I was so startled by the prospect, I didn't fully have time to put on my shorts. And the erection was unrelated. <laughs> Fuck. I peeked through my pause at my phone screen. The symbol for a missed voicemail having appeared up top. Maybe mom's really supportive. I, <laughs> I was going to say, I would just be like, hey... Uh, want to go? We're gonna skip school today. You want to go like walk, go to the movies <laughs> or something? Yeah. Let's like just have a nice day together. Not like we and talk about it if you want to. Magic Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I grit my teeth in extreme apprehension, turning the screen off and shoving the phone back into my pocket. Taking a moment to recombobulate, I look around. The bus is pretty empty. Besides me, the bus driver who has been trying to get the radio to work the whole ride and Carl in the seat adjacent to me. Carl, as usual, has his earbuds in with his expensive handheld out playing some Japanese tactics RPG. Usually we have at least Jeremy, Clint, Heather, Jasmine, and TJ with us, but not today. Not many kids who go to school in Peyton live out in Echo. I'm pretty astonished the bus district expansion covered our town. The bus ride from Peyton to Echo usually takes about 45 minutes. So it feels much longer. Imagine I'm having just thinking that being up, having that long of a commute for school. Uh, An I, hour I, and a half I of say, your day is just on the bus. Yeah, I, I say this remembering that I, I fucking had to drive an hour each direction to go to college for five and a half years. <laughs> Whoops. Hey, he fixed it. Good job, buddy. This is really setting. Oh man, does everyone have a draw in this game? Look at the look at the the landscape. Where's Route 65? Um, it's like through, uh, I think it's like Nevada, Arizona. It's mm. like, it is through like... Local-ish. Yeah, it's like you, one of the emptiest parts of the country. We live in California, so we can access yeah. it pretty easily. Especially now. 2008! That was, I, I'm 18 years old in current year. That was one eternity ago. <laughs> Oh, what does Carl sound like? <sighs> Should have planned ahead better which characters you're going to voice. <laughs> well, you don't know any of the characters today. How are you going to know? Yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> well, how do you do you know which characters are main characters? Carl is a main character. How many how many uh There's one female main character. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> I could be Carl. I don't know if Carl seems like he's going to be a little asshole though. Uh, I don't He's the, uh, you know that one with the the wolf and the ram, like, hugging and watching something on their phone? That fan art? He's the ram. Oh, I don't know if I remember. Is he a smartass? You don't know that either. I don't either. know his personality. <laughs> uh, yuck. <laughs> yuck. <laughs> yuck. The ram looks up from his game to the source of the music, slightly furrowed-browed. 
Our bus rider grins back at him through the rear mirror in a self-satisfied fashion, her gummy Cheshire ma on full yet brief display. Realizing that she is looking back at him, Carl grunts, hunching up his shoulders a bit. <clears throat> Karen, why? She lets out a brief chortle. Well, seeing as I only have you two along with me today, I thought I'd put on some tunes. Make your collar a little blue. Make your collar a little blue? Carl begrudgingly pauses his game, pulling out his earbuds and letting them hang over his horns. It was still weird seeing him like this. Around age 14, his horns developed a lot. He complained about headaches and neck strain constantly. Oh, that would be a weird thing to see somebody just change. Like, just grow horns. It's like, it's like, it's like Louis. Yeah, like, just you just... You just grow up seeing somebody not have horns, and then they just start having horns, and that like changes their entire like profile and appearance like significantly and forever. He told me I had to see a chiropractor in a state over because its horns were so big, and its neck muscles hadn't developed enough to support them. I wonder if that's like secretly a flex for yeah. for for Rams at least. We're like, oh man, it's what, like, like when like when dudes complain the water's cold. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> the toilet water. Oh gosh! But no, this makes me think they're bad it's at they're bad at peeing. It splashes back up at them, right? Like I no, don't it's know. a subtle flex that they have to like worry about. Oh, reaching that their it. dick touches. Oh, yeah. I don't you you people with your dicks. <laughs> <laughs> Even now, it's like oh man, my neck muscles just my giant like, fucking horns. Yeah, it's just like oh man, like. You know, even now my masculinity is so later, big. He still sits with a sort of low, hunched posture. <clears throat> <laughs> oh, I'm plenty blue-collared. Yeah, I live in Echo. She snarks again. Boy, I've seen the size of your manor. <laughs> now you, no, you ain't. <laughs> Never would have expected a sort like you to be so pomping yachty blooded. Pomp and yachty blooded. Carl doesn't say anything. His emerald gaze shifts some of the some to the seat in front of him. Karen takes a glug from her soda bottle with her free hand. The other steering us through an on ramp onto the freeway. The spa day I I would have on just one hour of your daddy's income. I feel bad for whoever works many petty that shift. <laughs> she holds up her calloused right hand. Her claws rather stubbed, even for a fox's standard. When I'm not driving you squirts, I do road crew for public works. Ain't your average mom, eh. She gesticulates with a swirling motion as she speaks, then lets her hand hang limply on the steering wheel. Well, it might be the new average here soon enough. Feminism and all that. You two learn all about, about it in college, I'm sure. What are you two going for, major-wise? You and your newfangled 2008 feminism. <laughs> That feminism, new wave feminism. Both of us make no quick move to respond. Chase. I shift some in my seat, clearing my throat so my voice doesn't crack. Uh, well, I wanted to go into videography and film, but my parents weren't too fond of that, so I guess journalism or communications? Ah. Aaron responds so abruptly that it makes me wonder if I said something She's wrong. She's like oh, immensely uninterested in what ah. you just said. She's like, ah. Uh. <laughs> hmm. Well, my nephew got one of them communication degrees from North Mountain State. Oh, how'd that go? Ended up being a $60,000 piece of paper that earns him thirteen twenty-five an hour fixing old farts like Gus's computer out in some big box establishment. Nerd squad, <laughs> I think they're called. Ugh, hell if I know. Oh no. <laughs> the horror. I know. I wonder what that's this a reference is, to, Keith. It's roughly when I worked <laughs> at Best Buy. <laughs> I'm still deciding, I, I guess. She waves dismissively. I look over at Carl, who looks like all he wants to do is go back to playing his game. What about you, Big Horns? That's inappropriate, ma'am. Carl blinks some at the casual speciesism. Oop. Eh, eh, eh. Ooh. Okay, I found it. I found it. Okay. Uh, then scratches the back of his neck. Um, you just plan on going straight to work for daddy right after you graduate? Uh, mommy, uh, mom, actually. I don't know yet. Carl looks pretty uneasy with this topic. 
He also seems pretty embarrassed at having said mommy out loud, or I in better spirits would probably laugh. Everyone is good at something, Carl, and hopefully that is something you enjoy too. You're always quiet with your nose in that little device of yours playing games. Maybe that's your future career. Something techy? Admittedly, Leo is usually the one to, who is most handy with fixing our tech stuff. Carl isn't even the best at video games. That title belongs to Jazz. Carl is too quiet. Uh, Carl, Carl is quiet for a bit, tugging on the strings of his hoodie. Oh, he's awkward. I don't know. Looking out the window, I see the sun is setting as we get within ten or so miles of Echo. We pass the old abandoned water park, which I heard closed shortly after the bypass was built and all its passerby traffic was lost. I think for a moment, I think for a moment I see what looks like some figures in the drained pool. Though when I try to squint, I don't see them anymore. I saw an, it recently. I went to Vegas and I saw an amazing abandoned water park, like an actual abandoned water park that people use as like a skateboarding haven, and it was yeah. all graffitied up and had like mm. pools, and you can tell people were climbing on stuff and knocking stuff over. It was really cool. <laughs> <laughs> I love places like that. Just tetanus everywhere. Tetanus, as far as <laughs> the eye can see. You know, I was around when that place shut down. I startled some, not realizing I was being watched. Both times, actually. Once in the 60s, and then again in the 80s when it reopened for a year. It was during the era of big government giving out big old water project construction to the state, of, state for pennies, LA being the golden child. Our county, as you two squirts are aware, did not become the next Orange County. Spoilers, as my son Keith used to say. <laughs> Spoilers. She lets out an amused grunt before stirring up some. A lot of folks lost their jobs. It was like a little Great Depression in the middle of Mormon land. Echo has been going to tits for generations, though. And not the good sort of tits either, the real <laughs> ugly ones. Like those, uh, what's her name, wields. Uh, Mrs. Tethers. Yeah, her. Are the tits her tethers? She, she like, <laughs> they, they're so, they're, they hang so low, you just time to the ground. No. I'm taken off guard by that comment. Mrs. Tethers is a particularly nasty history, history teacher at PHS who is known for not being too keen on vulpines. Oh, she's racist. There's a lot of racism here. She's anti fox. She does have a kind of lopsided pair. <laughs> <Don't> <laughs> wow. Anyway, it is a ripe shame. By the time you kitties are having kitties themselves, this town will be a feast for termites. Well, maybe not the manor. I see Karen's silver eyes focus on Carl. The castle, we used to call it. She says this bit rather strangely, as if trying to remember something specific. Carl is staring out the window, avoiding Karen's stare. In the two years we've had her as a bus driver, she has never spoken this much. Most of the time, she'd just be scolding Jeremy and Clint. I have this feeling she's been waiting for this opportunity to speak more personally with Carl for a while. As we get closer to Echo, we pass more abandoned places. Some are adorned with fading Art Deco stylings from the bygone modern era, while others are but rotting wood from the Mormon se settlement days. In my current situation, all these familiar architectural fadings seem to evoke is a pulsating sense of dread for what is to come. Carl, your family has been here for over a century. The way I see it, the least they could do is reinvest in what they capitalized on in the first place. Can you just, just change the radio station? Carl's horns are pressed up against the window, his tone low but his voice loud. Oh yeah? What do you want to set to? Anything but this. Carl looks down at his handheld, fidgeting with stuff in the character screen, but without the focus to actually keep playing. Fine. What do you want to listen to, Chase? Oh, you have a choice. Wow. Random? Because I hate choices. <sighs> Just double down on country, make his life miserable. <laughs> that actually... Be... I wonder what would happen if you do that. I don't like any of these options. Yeah, I don't either. Not even hard rock. I don't want. I don't want soft, soft rock. rock. Like who has ever asked for soft rock specifically? <laughs> Whatever. So a middle, uh, like an older gentleman who's trying to make love to his wife of thirty years. 
I don't know, we might be able to get that soft rock station that is sometimes available right before we get into town. What'd you say? You want this, but louder? Oh, you, no. did, you didn't have a choice. Oh, it's you. <laughs> no. No. It's louder? No. Chase, kill me. End my life. It's actually clipping a little bit in the audio. <laughs> I can hear a crackle. Maybe I'll respawn somewhere more peaceful. Respawn! He said respawn! He did. This is good for you, Carl. You're getting blue-collared, albeit, you know, the hard way. If I wanted to get blue-collared the hard way, I'd borrow Jasmine's jean short shorts and stand assumingly around the motel. Covering our ears and pressing our heads to the seats in front of us, we endure the hick musical cavalcade as Jasmine deemed this... Has, has Jasmine deemed this station? Hick uh -oh. musical cavalcade. I like the the presence of the missing characters. Like they inform things and they're referenced and so on. I don't like that he used uh, he used the term getting blue collared getting the hard blue -collared, way. The hard way. Yeah. <laughs> like getting gang banged by a bunch of blue collars. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what he was talking about. I don't know because that's what she called it. Well, no, no. He was she was saying oh, you should get blue collared, but she meant like you should you should get more like kind of rustic. But what yeah. he was saying if I, is he's like if I wanted to get blue collared the hard way, oh, then yeah. I would I would go to the motel <laughs> presenting myself in some short shorts. It's a, a good imagination for a I don't know a sixteen year old or whatever he is. Glancing sidelong out the bus window, I see that we're less than a mile from home. My paw pads start to feel clammy as I clutch the, my knees tight. It's fortunate that Carl is currently occupied with busying his muzzle, bearing his muzzle into the faux leather of the seat in front of him as I begin to tremble. Part of me actually wants him to see. I know it's just stalling for the inevitable, but I want to talk to someone, anyone about this. This is a small town, and whoever I speak to will know that I like guys, and I'll have to deal with them knowing that fact every day till college. If I go to college. I used to hate being so damn generic. Fucking Flynn whines about how boring I am all the time, but now... All I can see are folks looking at me, seeing that, seeing me as that otter who likes it up the rear, and not as generic Chase. Are you an otter? Reveal. God, that's what my parents will see me as too. This is sort of... This sort of deviant who lives in their home. I imagine them looking at the photos of me around the house now and wishing they could have had that back. I've never really talked to my parents about relationships and sex stuff, and now I just shocked them with this whole new side of me. What an anniversary present I've given their them! It's anniversary yep. too. <laughs> I look over and see Carl hunched over, his horns pushed into the seat, and his gaze focused blankly on the screen on his, of his handheld. Upon closer inspection, the screen is completely black; the device no longer on. It seems that he's not in the best of states either. I swallow, debating disturbing him. Carl might be my best friend, but we don't really have deep talks, especially since the lake incident. Maybe I could text someone. I slide my phone out of my pocket, staring at the black screen, much like Carl is now. I realize when I get home, my parents are probably going to be are going to demand to see my phone and messages, so I'll have to remember to delete them. I try to imagine how each one of my friends would react. But this is honestly foreign ground, only alluded to in trading insults and jokes. Flynn especially. The lizard drops the word faggot in every other sentence as a late, though I think he just chooses it for maximum edginess. Oh, he's one of those kids. A 4 -chaner. Jasmine, on the other hand, might be the most supportive with this sort of thing. However, she wasn't at school today. I eavesdropped Flynn mentioning something about issues with her parents and Jeremy and to Leo. Oop about her parents and Jeremy to Leo, but I couldn't make out the specifics. I don't even know how Leo would react to any of this. He makes jokes about poofy stuff all the time, but I can tell that, he, that there's some unease there. That leaves TJ. Carl describes, described him once as, as the moral gooey center of our sandwich of a group of friends. The moral gooey center. That being said, I'm not sure how much I can actually tell him. He's just hes just barely crossing the puberty threshold right now. Oh, he's an innocent little boy. Plus the Christianity oh, yeah. factor. Um, 
I uncover one of my ears long enough to pull out my phone. My heart skipping a beat as the new vo at, at the new voicemail notification. I quickly swipe over my contacts. Mm. Oh, you have! Oh my gosh, you have options, and you don't even you haven't even met these people yet. I Car mean, at least not us. Carl we have not met these people yet. We met Carl. <laughs> I mean, so Jasmine's the one that might be supportive. TJ's the Christian that's too young. Leo's the one that seems uncomfortable with the gay jokes. Flynn's the one that that says that is outright edgy, bad word all time. And Jasmine's the one that he says might be supportive, but she's got stuff on her plate. So like, that, like, that, like each one of them has a specific. It's really issue. messy. Le Leo, we're not sure how he feels about it because he makes. Uh, Car Carl's our best friend, but also he's going through shit clearly because he's not happy right now. I mean, I, th I think it's weird to have a best friend you don't have. Well, well, he said we don't have co deep conversations with him since the lake incident, which makes me wonder about the lake incident. Mm. <laughs> what are they dealing with? It feels like they hint at Leo a bit. Well, Leo's the one that seems like it has the least amount of problem, because every other person they gave a problem for, with Leo, they just said that he might seem uncomfortable because he makes poof jokes. Yeah. Well, I think they said that he makes the poof jokes, but he seems uneasy about it. it was, like, the phrasing, I think. Well, I didn't other, know if other that... Other than that, all we know about him is that he's handy. Oh, like, oh, like he, like, he, he's, he's, he's making the jokes that he thinks the kids will think it's, are cool about the, the... Like the gay jokes, but he doesn't seem like he has hearts in it. Is that what you? What do you think? Is that, is that you? I think that? that's what they said. Kind of. Yeah, I guess I, I would. Yeah, I would say either Leo or Jasmine. I'd probably just do Leo. Sure. Leo's the person they gave us the least amount of information about. Let's find out. Leo always has a weird sort of per, uh, paternal vibe going on with him. If someone in our group is feeling down or about to make a stupid decision, he usually goes out of his way to set them straight. Well, if he just told me that, I would have said him right away. Yeah. Man. Jasmine says this is largely due to the culture he comes from, the whole pack mentality thing. So is he, is he a dog? Is he a lion? <laughs> is he a lion? <laughs> <laughs> I guess, yeah, that's, you would think that because his name's Leo. Uh, in truth, though, Leo's one of the first friends I ever made back when I was six. I'm sort of hoping time cuts through the stigma bullshit and and you'll have t an idea of what to do. My thumb pad hovers over my over his portrait picture in the messenger app. All right, here goes nothing. Can I talk to you for a second? Is he going to respond in app? I wonder if I shouldn't have done punctuation or capitalization. Maybe try to sound a little more casual. I will. I have literally never thought about formatting a text, and I've heard that everyone else does a oh, lot yeah, more. And I there's do. like so much weird detail <laughs> about that stuff. Dude, I think about where my. I think about line breaks. I hate, <laughs> you think about. I hate that. I hate that entire concept of having to think about this stuff. But I. I like, uh, I just have a. I have a thing where I like to type the way that I speak. A lot of the time, so yeah. like I have to think about. I want it to come off. Like I use commas and, and ellipses, ellipses, like places where I'd actually pause. Like I'll include like, like I'll be like something, 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 comma, like, comma, da da da. da. Yeah. Like I like how I would say it if I'm being like extra casual. It's like, da, 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 da. like now it's, whatever. Now I type LOL way too much because back when I didn't, people thought I was angry all the time. <laughs> it's like, well, fuck. I don't. I'm just saying the words I'm trying to say. I don't know. I I my aunt, I my aunt thinks you're mad if you don't use uh, um. Oh my gosh, emojis! I almost said emoticons. Yeah. Wow. Back in the day, I'm old. emoticons. I was. I. I still. I, you. You can find me saying emoticon as as recent of like as like three months ago or some shit. Like emoji, I still hate the word and it feels weird and wrong. I. I don't. I'm not. Yeah. Emo I hate like 99 of all the emojis. It's like I'll yeah. smiley face, heart, the frog one. Frog one. The skull one. <laughs> there we go. Busy, but what? Shit. He doesn't have practice today, so I thought he'd be free. Managing text messaging with Leo is hard enough as it is. With him distracted, it might be wor it'd be even worse. Looks like I can't do it through here. I think I should talk to you about it in person. I see. Okay. God, he always does this. Two to three word responses. 
he's still probably hanging out with the other football folk outside of school. See, and if you told me he gave two or three word responses, I would have said not him. You didn't give me any enough information to make the decision. This is our chance to learn about characters. I know. Lucky Bastard has his own truck now, so he mostly doesn't come home with us anymore. He has a truck so we can escape and not go home. Trick. <laughs> I find myself biting the inside of my cheek and quickly force myself to stop. Okay. See, I don't like how you, I don't like how you just responded, Chase. Because <laughs> <laughs> I stared at my phone screen for a long while and eventually came to the conclusion that this is a waste of time. I didn't have a phone in high school. That's uh, how old I am. <laughs> that's the, that's the situation see, I'm in. I'm a few years younger than you, so I got mine in eighth grade. Yeah, no, but I got it was a, the kind you had to sit there and you had to push the one button three times to yeah. get the letter C. And the last four but letters are, all shared one button, so you had to press it four times to get to Z and so on. Yeah, so texting yeah. was like the biggest mm -hmm. nightmare. And then, then you get charged per text, depending mm -hmm. on your phone plan. So, Yep, that was a... Uh... Yeah, it wasn't... I didn't come home once, because I stayed behind... I stayed after school for something, and my parents lost their shit when I wasn't on, didn't come home on the bus, and so... I think they almost immediately like, called the police and so on. Like, they, they, like there was like fucking code red immediately. I'm like, I did not realize how how big of a deal this is going to be, or that they would even notice because I was still planning on being home before they got off work. Uh, but my brother told them, and uh, <laughs> suddenly I had a cell phone senior year. Well, there you go. Because <laughs> suddenly them not knowing where I was for five minutes was a problem after a whole lifetime of being told kids don't play outside anymore we used to just roam the neighborhood but then the moment i fucking am not exactly where they want me to be for two seconds suddenly i need to get a cell phone <laughs> uh those little hypocrisies are interesting just those details it's, it's cheating the system because people because they, they always repeat thought trip like thought terminating cliches where they just like they just keep hearing other people say, like, kids used to, we used to roam the, the things. But then also, like, they're, they're full on stranger danger freaked out at the idea of you going anywhere and doing anything. And those two ideas con con contradict each other, but they never resolve that contradiction in themselves. So you get to hear both parts. <laughs> and you're like, what, what do you want from me? I say, well, at least my parents were like, my dad was like, I have to go do whatever I wanted. But my mom was like, yeah. no, I grew up in Hayward. My daughter's really cute. She can't leave the cul-de-sac. I used to get beat up all the time. Like, like oh, no. she's like, I'm not letting my kid experience life how I experienced it in my sketchy ass neighborhood. So she was very much upfront about like, we're we're doing it different than how you got to walk around, husband, because you were a man and like mm -hmm. nobody was trying to mess with you where you lived in your nice neighborhood. Like for me, for me, it was like, do you want me to stay inside all day and play video games all day? Or do you want me to be outside throwing rocks at trains? I never got a clear answer on that one. <laughs> which one's the, which one should I be doing? You can play a video game about throwing rocks at trains. <laughs> be like, no, be like, dad, it's okay. I'm playing like farming sim. So like, I am kind of doing outside activities. I'm just doing them <laughs> indoors. Indoor, outdoor activities. I stare at my phone screen for a long while and eventually come to the conclusion that this is a waste of time. He doesn't seem to be any hurry to respond now. I don't want to fuck this up by badgering him with my whinging revelation that I apparently love cock and he'd rather be doing anything else. While he'd rather be doing anything else. I probably should have saved before the choice, I just realized, so that we can actually make other choices. I'll have to fast forward if you want to go back. As the familiar landmarks of the railway and the and the red rock of Echo the Red Rock of Echo Canyon come into view out of the window, my restless anxiety returns. Steadying myself, I wipe back. I swipe back over my contacts. I think you might just get to choose again. Oh. I, yeah, I was gonna, like, I so kind Leo's of, just a bad choice. I think you I, might I, have the same issue. I think everyone's going to have a thing. Are they all bad friends? <laughs> no, I just think you're going to have to talk to... Well, I mean, Confide with Carl's a choice. So I thought maybe you were going to have to just talk with Carl, but I forgot that he's included on this list. So Yeah. Talk to the bus driver lady. <laughs> she seems... I like her. I want to talk to nice. Carl. Let's figure... What was the lake incident? <laughs> the, <laughs> it's like Spongebob at the Christmas party. Yeah. It's like that photo of me at the Christmas party. Like, I guess I just have to wait for the right opportunity. Right now, not being it. I'm about to slide my phone into my pocket when I feel it vibrate against the pads of my palm. Blynn. He look, what does his picture make him look like? What is he? He's a lizard. 
Oh, he's the one that throws the F bomb around and not the yep. fuck one. <laughs> I got Gorgonzola at the mini market in Peyton. Well, Ew. that's. Hey, Gorgonzola. I I'd go, I'd say, fuck you, Flynn. Don't ever no talk to me about Gorgonzola <laughs> again. It's my least honest, favorite food. I honestly have no idea what this message means. Instinctively, I try to respond with something jabby. I'm I'm sorry, Flynn. I I'm sure they have a cream for that. <laughs> I don't usually ever text Flynn, mainly because he doesn't text back. So this is weird, I guess. No, oh my God, it's not a type of salad. It's a type <laughs> of cheese. It's a type of salad, you musky fuck. Musky. Oh gosh. Because he's a mucilid. Oh. That was a it, it was, cheese. It is a cheese, Flynn. You idiot. You can have a salad with gorgonzola on it. That's not the <laughs> name of the salad. Whatever. It's not like a Waldorf salad. You don't just get a gorgonzola. Why are you texting me about salad? He's also trying to come out to you as gay, but that, that's, how, <laughs> that's how he's doing that's it. That's his code. The gorgonzola was the secret <laughs> yeah, word. Yeah, he's flagging. Looking out the bus window, I can see that we're approaching Carl's stop. As the bus turns to the neighborhood road, I scoot over some, speaking, uh, speaking up to get Carl's attention. So, I'm gonna get off with you here, okay? Carl just continues staring at the blank screen for a second before blinking and looking back at me. Are you sure? It would be kind of messy, and Karen watching might give me performance anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna make a joke about that, but I just decided to let it slide, so that's pretty funny. <laughs> I, I didn't fully click what was he what he was saying till you finished saying it. <laughs> like, oh, okay, gotcha. <laughs> wow. Little does he know how awkward the timing of that joke was today. <laughs> given <laughs> Carl stares deadpan at me, I rest my forehead into my paw and groan. Though I end up snickering a bit. The bus comes to a stop. Carl, this is where you get off. <laughs> Chase wants to get off, too. The bus. You have a note from your folks? Shit. I look back at Carl, and he gives me a look of understanding. He unslings his backpack from his shoulder, rifling through it. Carl looks up at me briefly, mouthing one word. Stall. Ask, Ask about, about Keith! Keith. <laughs> I do. I make a motion of... Holding something up behind my seat, Carl seems to have found a pen and notepad and is scribbling hastily. So, uh, Karen, you mentioned your son Keith? The name sounds familiar. <laughs> the name does sound familiar. <laughs> Karen gives me a rather dubious look, her silver eyes, uh, silver gaze eyeing me up. Well, I doubt you have recently. Keith's been gone for a good year or so now. You literally mentioned him today. Where, uh, where did he go? Karen scratches the end of her muzzle, still eyeing me with the same searching expression. Uh, he's dead. Dead to me, at least. Oh, that's a very different meaning. Yeah, those are, those are very not the same thing, Karen. Oh. S sorry? Definitely not going to prod there. Carl currently looks as if he's trying to camouflage into his seat, slowly sliding down it. Sight. The old fox lets out a huff that is half exasperated, half amused. She waves dismissively. You squirt's gonna exit the bus or not? I got a big bowl of cinnamon chips and pineapple mango salsa waiting for me back home. Do you eat those together? I don't know if I liked that. <laughs> cinnamon, cinnamon chips. Cinnamon chips and pineapple mango salsa. Pineapple mango salsa is good. But you eat those with- what are the fuck are cinnamon chips, Karen? Cinnamon? Cinnamon, like cinnamon toast crunch, like what is Probably. chips? Chips that are cinnamon? I guess. I mean, everything here sounds sweet to me. Like are the potato chips, Karen? The tortilla chips? Because that's what you eat with salsa. This probably works. I don't Not like works. this, Karen. Well, it's pineapple mango salsa. Yeah, but that, that's all good. But the cinnamon, like what? What is a cinnamon chip? Uh, send your votes at home. Well, how, does cinnamon chips? Taste good with kids. Do parents see the cinnamon pineapple crunch? <laughs> I just got, I, I just got some mad issues with this. I shift awkwardly in my seat in real life. <laughs> Out of the corner of my eye, something yellow flutters down by my feet. With haste, I bend down and snatch up the note, acting as nonchalant as possible. Carl's penmanship is actually pretty good. 
I give him a discreet, grateful look as he gets up and moves to the exit. I'm coming. Carl stops, looking back at me with the same deadpan as before. <laughs> to the front of the bus. I think I hurl Carl mutter. That's quite some range. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> he's ready. He's ready. <laughs> he's just got he's just got riffs. <laughs> as he turns and continues offward. <laughs> like a thumb on a hose. <laughs> <laughs> Carl hops off first. His he's hook's going making for an distance. Odd. He's going for speed. speed. <laughs> he's all alone. All, all alone. alone. All alone in a time of need. He's actually on a bus. <laughs> <laughs> this, what, this is a hell of a first episode. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, Carl hops off first. His hooves making an audible clop noise upon the aged asphalt. I don't know why I always pronounce it that way. Aged? Yeah. <laughs> Dry aged salami. Aged salami. Aged it's, cheese. It's, it's 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 it sounds like it has more pretense to it. However, as I follow and move to hand my note to Karen, her calloused hand grasps my wrist instead of the note. I'm not that deaf and dumb, Kitty. I've been doing this job a long while. She relinquishes my rel relinquishes my wrist. The note fluttering to the ground. I can feel Carl staring nervously at us from the road. I appreciate your curiosity. Keith and I live down in Colville, so doubt you'd know him. He made some seriously questionable decisions regarding his amorous pursuits. Uh-oh. Things I could not abide by. Fuck you. <laughs> she shifts some, of, some in her large driver's seat, the cadence of her voice changing some as she looks to the back of the bus. I saw you back there, puffy-eyed and trembling. Oh, no. You afraid of something at home? I know how the people can be out here. Like you, judging by the last thing you said. Like, yeah, I was gonna say, first of all, why would flash? you why would you include that? Because yeah. because because you don't know what happened to me this morning. So why did you bother including that? But uh, secondly, you, the rest of your statement would actually be very sweet of a bus driver to notice. Like you look like you're having a hard time and you're getting off the bus early. Makes me think that you're afraid of something at home, and I'm a concerned adult in your life who cares about you. But that first part ruined the rest of it. <laughs> yeah. Someone's full of contradictions they're not resolving. I'm frozen, feeling the tips of my ears burn rosy at today's endless cavalcade of embarrassment. She pauses, banding, bending down to pick up the dropped note and, and before tossing it into the bus's trash bucket. This is an example of, like, the your teenagers are dogs that don't hide anything that they're doing as well as they think they are. <laughs> yeah. Especially with kids. I'm not sure what she means by that, and definitely oh. I'm not sure what to say. She I look thinks back you're being Carl. abused sexually by adults. I seem to be averting his gaze now. He seems to be averting his gaze now, his paws deep in his hoodie oh, maybe pockets. Keith's amorous pockets. pursuits are not about him being gay or straight. Maybe they have to do with him and little kids. Mm. Which, honestly, I think that's what she's, I think that's what she's getting at. Can I change his name? <laughs> the text file? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, I get it. Nobody trusts the hick bus driver to know what it's like to be a kid these days. Look, run along now. Sorry for, you know, grabbing ya. I used to get... <laughs> I'm used to them shits Jeremy and Clinton doing that and getting me in trouble. I try hard and force a smile. Oh, uh, thanks. I appreciate your concern and all. Uh, yeah, they are pretty shitty. Hey, language, kiddo. <laughs> Sorry. Also, tell Carl his flies down. He looks like a damn fool. <laughs> I see Carl stiffen, quickly reaching down and fumbling with a zipper. His neon orange super wolf Ooh. boxers visible through his fly. <laughs> what? Is that a real? Is that a real thing? I don't know what super wolf is. Look that up later. Karen just sighs. I feel my phone vibrate within my pocket. See you, squirts on Monday. Aww. Oh, dude. We get to finally see Carl. He's so, like... They didn't show us the whole time. That's a very nice background. I like the color. It's the, It's got the gradient I like. <laughs> the orange to purple. This looks like a lot of... Like, this 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 town and this whole setup, it actually reminds me of a lot of the rural towns in California here. Yeah. Like, this is kind of like what... Like, if you drive... N north a bit. There's a bunch of towns that look like that. 
It's like a, it's chow, like Chowchilla and that kind of, those kinds of places. Well, Galt and Gustine and you know, settle in, folks. Next episode, a lot more of this. <laughs> Yeehaw! Ye <what? laughs> How do I end this? Mm -hmm.